complicated row this one, so I'm going to try and boil it down and hope I get it right. It appears to be this. Labour deputies' leader has been embroiled on an ongoing controversy about whether she broke electoral and tax laws. Angela Rayner was referred to the police by a Conservative MP over claims she registered the wrong property on the electoral roll. Officers have said that they're now going to review their initial decision not to investigate. Now, the tax matter is separate from that and centres around whether or not she managed to avoid paying capital gains tax on her principal residence when it was sold. Miss Rayner has denied any wrongdoing, saying couples who divorce but have children together often spend time at each other's homes for the sake of the kids. This is what Shadow Foreign Secretary and fellow LBC presenter David Lammy had to say about it when asked on Sky News. I think the Mail on Sunday has evidence that Angela Rayner, like so many families across the country had and has a blended family. Uh, You meet someone, they have children, a a, a previous um, arrangement. Many families up and down the country live in more than one home. Uh, That's what the photos I saw reflects. And it's consistent with the advice that Angela took in terms of her tax affairs from accountants, from lawyers, I, I don't think this is a story. I think well, the... well, hang on. It, it is a story because uh, what you're saying says that the place that she said was not her home was where she actually lived. And no, nobody's arguing that it isn't complicated and maybe some people make mistakes. Why didn't she just say, uh, I, may, I may have made a mistake here. The law says what you're supposed to do. You can only have one home. And maybe she made a mistake. Why not just say that? I think she's been clear all along. No, she said she's done nothing wrong. Yeah, so she's been clear she's done nothing wrong. Um, She has our full support. So that's David Lammy defending Angela Rayner against accusations that have been trawled up and reprinted in the Mail on Sunday. I should say all of these allegations began with an unauthorised biography of Ms Rayner by the multi-millionaire businessman and Brexit supporter Lord Ashcroft, the former deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, who is a British Belize citizen, uh, first made those allegations in his book and they have then been subsequently reprinted by various newspapers. But I have to say, particularly the Daily Mail and the Mail on Sunday. Anyway, it's got me thinking about what it is we are actually witnessing here in a much broader sense. Of course, there may be legitimate questions to ask about the electoral roll and whether or not she paid the right taxes. But I also wonder if what we're also seeing is a kind of class war playing out in our newspapers between somebody who is very obviously and proud of her working class roots versus other politicians and even the author of her unauthorised biography. Who are significantly wealthier. Lines are open now, 0345 6060 973. Do you think Angela Rayner and other working class MPs, regardless of party, come under disproportionate amounts of scrutiny by our press? Or do you think all MPs are fair game? 0345 6060 973. I'm very pleased to say I'm joined by Adam Bolton, political commentator. And of course, uh, political editor once upon a time at Sky News, who's doing Trevor Phillips's job not so long ago, um, who last week wrote, Why the Tories can't stand Angela Rayner. Welcome, Adam. Why can't they stand her? I think there are some people, and they're not exclusively Conservatives, who are offended by the idea of Angela Rayner because uh, of who she is, because she has a, a Mancunian accent, because she was a single parent at the age of 16, uh, because uh, she's had a, you know, like a lot of us, a, a messy private life involving divorces, and they just don't see someone like that as being the leader of the country. I mean, to a much lesser extent, John Major got this kind of uh, scrutiny ages ago. So I think she is seen as a soft target, 
which I think is one of the reasons why uh, Mischief Maker, uh, like uh, Lord Ashcroft, spent some of his uh, pile of money commissioning a biography to see what could be turned up about her. I mean, it's no secret she hasn't had a, you know, a, a sort of standard uh, go to Oxford, get a PPE degree, work for an MP life. She's, she's had a hard struggle life. She is a, a, an impressive uh, looking woman who you know looks good on the front page of a newspaper uh, or whatever. So I think there's been a hunger uh, to go after her. And my point about this story is, in the end, it's not quite a nothing burger, but it's just a few crumbs, really. I mean, bear in mind, all this is talking about 15 years ago when she wasn't an MP. Um, not like some of the stories we've had this week, for example, uh, uh, about MPs and honey traps and, and, and all the rest. And secondly... In spite of what the Daily Mail says, it has only turned up a mouse in as much as originally people were saying, oh, you know, the original embarrassment was she'd been a Thatcherite and bought her council house. But when they realised that people shrugged about that, they then looked on to, you know, the fact that when she and her former husband got together, they had... They lived in se separate homes. Well, you know, I think that covers most people who get together. When they get together, by definition, they live in separate homes and sometimes they keep them on. Now, and, and even, you know, looking at the Daily Mail's editorial today doesn't use the word lie. The front page uses the word lie, doesn't say she's lied. And it actually suggests that, you know, she should be subject, subjected to scrutiny. Well, you know, that's fine, but that's really defending doing the story in the first place. And, and suggested that she could have all cleared it up if she said, well, I might have made a mistake. Uh, I'll give a thousand pounds to charity because it's only that small amount that she seems to have avoided. Not the same as Nadim Zahawi, who had to resign 4.8 million, not the same as uh, uh, Lord Ashcroft, who for a long time was a non-dom and uh, didn't pay tens of millions of tax. This is a tiny thing, and it does seem to me that it is a little bit personalised against Angela Rayner. And I've actually seen her described by some Conservatives commentators as unreliable or a soft target. And I think that's betraying their prejudices, not necessarily what she's done wrong. In your piece, which is excellent, by the way, you, you said, I'm going to quote it, you say she evokes condescension from her critics, but also, I think, an element of fear that someone like her has risen so far. Yeah, I think people are put off by that. I mean, I think, you know, there are people who believe in a hierarchy and a class system and getting someone who is so clearly working class being on the brink of being deputy prime minister and a cabinet minister, I think it upsets some people. And, and you know, I can, I can tell you uh, I've experienced that directly. Uh, there's a charity event which I mentioned in the uh, uh, thing which you, you may have done called Turn the Tables mm -hmm. for um, uh, Cancer Research. And there she interviewed me and her opening question was, do you think there's something wrong with my accent? Which showed her sensitivities, if you like, on that issue. And I said, well, not as far as I was concerned, but the ladies who lunch around me, who were pretty well connected in the Tory party, I mean, they just seethed about her. They, they couldn't stand her. She had, you know, put their hairs on edge. And I think there are people who feel like that. Have you ever seen this kind of visceral polarising reaction to other MPs that, uh, perhaps, uh, as you've described, you know, didn't go to private school, then ended up doing PPE at Oxford or Cambridge or whatever. Have you seen something similar with other MPs in the past? Well, I think what we do see is women who are not obviously kind of ruling class, if you like, they do get targeted. I mean, Jess Phillips, for example, has, has, has talked about uh, the sort of thing she gets on social media. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you, go, if you look back... Um, certainly, I think uh, most people say that John Prescott, uh, you know, had a chip on his shoulder to a certain extent, even although he'd been a, you know, a, a successful trade unionist before he became an MP and felt that he was being looked down on and, and felt that he had to explain why he wasn't articulate or got his words muddled, you know, when he spoke uh, sometimes. So I think, you know, I think there is a bit, a bit of, 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 of class prejudice and, and conversely, I think there is a little bit of forelock talking, tugging, frankly, towards people like uh, Lord Cameron and Boris Johnson and uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg, who have this kind of to-the-manner-born uh, style, uh, which I think, um, you know, perhaps has given them an easier ride than they might have deserved. Well, you mentioned people not liking Angela 
Lorena's slightly complicated family life. I mean, it didn't stop Boris Johnson. Well, no, but on the other hand, it didn't arouse comment in the way that this has aroused scrutiny. Right. I mean, you know, no one I know has looked into, you know, the intricacies of the various homes which Boris Johnson has lived in and been locked out of, you know, so... <laughs> How much of a political problem do you think it will be in an election year for the Labour Party if certain newspapers keep banging on about um, this particular hour in relation to Angela Rayner? Well, it really comes down to how influential and how important you think those newspapers are. Mm. Um, but I do think that we have moved into a kind of polarised era in our politics where anything is deemed to be fair game and when one side is happy to put the you know the lawyers and investigators onto the other for the merest you know uh, potential misdemeanor and so i think what we are going to see if we get a Keir Starmer government is i think we will see newspaper stories whatever happens with the Rainer story saying oh god how can we possibly have that woman as deputy prime minister you know all that scandal about her house and all the rest of it and i think it's just going to go on like that um at the same time uh, we know two things. One is that the public is buying those sort of newspapers less and less. Mm. And secondly, that there's even worse viciousness taking place on social media. So we're, I don't think we're going to escape this. Um, and, and I think, you know, I think we all, I, I just think about this story and I, I am not I don't vote. I'm not a Labour supporter. I'm not a Tory supporter, but I am someone who's covered politics for 40 years. And I just think occasionally you need to step back and say, how much is there in this particular story? Does it, you know, frankly really matter? And if it doesn't, I think you should be prepared to say so. Anna Bolton, political commentator, uh, who wrote uh, in the eye last week, um, why the Tories can't stand Angela Rayner. Thank you very much indeed. should say the eye newspaper, eye newspaper, not <laughs> private eye. <laughs> no, well, that might be your next move. Who knows? Listen, thank you very much, Lee. I appreciate that. Thanks.